Hello everybody. I've just waited a few minutes for people that might just still want to tune in. The music you're listening to at the moment is from um, it's called Bien and Tandu in Editions, Zen Garden Volume 3, and it's called Infinity. My name is Bev and for those who are joining us for the first time, welcome to you. Make yourself comfortable and relax. Focus on your breath, in with the new and out with the old. Clear your mind of any worries, allow your body to release and let go of any negative thoughts. Imagine yourself anchoring to Mother Earth like the roots of a tree reaching a pink pool of love and light. Feel calm and know that you are safe and at ease. Visualise yourself with your favourite place or perhaps inside the sanctuary chapel or in the rose garden with the water fountain or the surrounding woodland of Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. Let's begin with attunement and grounding. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a, a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. Now the Sanctuary Prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power and disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stress of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me with a divine healing purpose for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit. I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit, that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. Now for the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, Purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre, which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out. 
and his cleansing are full energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. Now the poem Touched by Angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us, as through, th through us the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand. And forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder and perhaps in your own thoughts and written words receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distance healing. Also send healing for the animals of this world and especially to our animal friends who are part of our family. Now for a minute of silence whilst these healing energies are sent out to the world. May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessing for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies and to all our friends in spirit, thank you. I've chosen a passage from the Big Book of Angels which I read from before. It's called Divas, Fairies and Nature Spirits and it's written by Dorothy McLean. Most of us have grown up enjoying tales of fairies with gossamer wings who sip nectar from bluebells, elves that live under toadstools and sprites with both mischievous and are helpful. These are storybook versions of nature spirits known as elementals. They are very real to those who live close to the land. Many native people have long been aware of guardian spirits who look after the well-being of plants, animals and even countries. In the hierarchy of nature spirits, divas, Sanskrit for shining ones, constitute the highest order. New Age thinkers see them as angels of the natural realm, whose job it is to hold nature in balance and teach people to protect rather than pollute the environment. The foremost example of a human partnership with divas is in the Findhorn spiritual community in northern Scotland. In 1962, Dorothy McLean, a Canadian, and her friends Eileen and Peter Caddy moved to a desolate area of snow, icy winds and sandy soil, 600 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Their hope was to live a life of surrender to God. Under divine guidance, as they made efforts to plant a garden in this uncompromising location, McLean found herself being contacted by the angels or divas of individual plants. Based on her attunement to the plant angels, the garden flourished remarkably. She and the caddies grew 42 pound cabbages, eight foot high delphiniums and other amazing plants without fertilizers or pesticides. The media picked up on the story and people flocked, from fin flocked to Findhorn as New Age Mecca. Others, 
including National Park Rangers, told McLean that they too had experienced contact with nature spirits, but kept quiet, fear of ridicule. McLean left Findhorn in the 1970s, but has continued to help other work, work cooperatively with nature's intelligence. She says such cooperation is vital to the world. In the following essay, McLean discusses her discovery of the angels that animate, govern or overlight everything, from the smallest pebble to the largest man-made creation, including cities and governments. Years ago, while at Findhorn, I was very surprised and sceptical when I was told by my inner divinity that such things as planets, clouds and vegetables had an overlighting intelligence and that I was to attune to it and harmonise with these intelligences. When I finally got around to such attunements, I began with the garden pea, my favourite among the vegetables that we were trying to grow. From its intelligence, I received a clear inner message, which I put into words as I have been doing for 10 years with my inner attunements. That began my collaboration with the energies of various plants. These I encountered on the soul level, each group of species having a soul, which I called a diva or angel, although to me they were formless energy fields. With answers to our questions and with our conscious cooperation, we grew remarkably healthy vegetables. The fin, fin, fin horn garden became well known for our particular method of gardening. Almost immediately after my first plant contact, I became aware of a presence that seemed to be in charge of the area in which we were living. I called it the landscape angel and it became my mentor regarding various approaches to, to gardening and how to co co cooperate with the Devic realm. Among other lessons, it is, it is as well as the God within often urged me to contact other members of these other dimensions and I gradually attuned to angels of qualities such as an angel of serenity and angel of sound. As these came up into my life, I also learned that when a group of people were separate enough to have their own unique identity, there was also an inner level identity representing that particular group. My first experience of this aspect was with the angel of our own group, the angel of Findhorn. I had long thoroughly disliked cities and wanted to live in the country in harmony with all life, which was the way I had considered that primal peoples lived. While living in the United States in the 1976, I had the opportunity to visit Native American sites and found that my notions were merely romantic dreams, for I learned that the Native Americans had consisted of warring tribes and also lived in conditions that would be very uncomfortable compared to my 20th century standards. Dorothy continues to write about the soul of a city. That discovery broke down my rigid antipathy for cities, and when I next came to a large city, I was open to the spiritual aspect of the city. I experienced a wonderful overlighting angel from whom I received a mes message in which I was asked to send love to it. That amazed me, for I thought we receive love from the angels, not send it. On pondering this, I realised that the angels of our large cities must have, must have about the most difficult job on the planet, for they were trying to bring joy and peace to our darkest spots. The crowded, rebellious, poor, drug-filled, criminal districts in our cities how different from looking after a beautiful nature area. I also realised I had made the job of the city angels even more difficult, for I had used cities for shopping, movies, museums and so forth, without a word of thanks, quickly getting out of what I considered concrete jungles. This encounter completely changed my view of cities and I settled in a large city, Toronto. In the downtown area, on an eighth floor, 
and had no problems with living in the city. Of course, nothing was different except my attitude. We can all find something to live in the city, such as a tree in the park, which will get love flowing and enable us to make contact with the angel of the city. Another area of the angelic world opened up to me at the same time. I had considered myself a planetary citizen and even created a planetary passport, although this passport was not recognised by any country. I thought I had great outgrown nationalism in my concept of myself as a citizen of the world. In my Toronto neighbourhood, I found a deep love and nostalgia for such things as the, as the wonderful wild life flowers growing in the Canadian woods before the leaves unfolded. Flowers that seemed so much more exquisite than any garden blooms. And for the climate with its rich seasons. I had been bored with the continual rain of Britain or the continual sun of California and the peaches of Niagara Peninsula were the most luscious in the world. As a seventh generation Canadian, I knew the past of the area. Even the present was familiar. For there was a big new library in Toronto named the John Robots Library, and I had attended the same university at the time that he did. As all these familiarities appeared, I began to wonder if there was more relevance in our national and ethnic backgrounds than I had thought. So I wondered if there was an angel of Canada whose vice, advice I could seek. With love, I focused on such a present and got in touch with a wonderful energy, one with quite a feel of nature. It communicated that it could not do its job properly as it worked through people and we Canadians didn't know our identity. That motivated me and others on a long search for an identity on the personality level. It also began my inner contact with the angels of other countries I visited. I learned that I can be helpful in to contact such angels, see if they have anything to communicate and ask questions on our offer of assistance wherever we can. Within this chapter I also found a poem written by William Bloom. That there is an invisible spirit to all things is a common understanding in mystic and tribal religions. Trees, mountains, animals, rocks and household objects, buildings, plants, rivers, dances, rituals, healings, communication, gifts, the list is endless. All have an invisible spirit. This diva dimension is part of the creative matrix of everything that exists. A few days ago I found out that um, Dorothy McLean retired from public life in 2010 and she did return to Findhorn. She celebrated her 100th birthday in January of this year and passed into spirit in March. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your day. Please continue to contact us in a normal way. Visit our website for details. We are but a phone call away. We can chat with you if you need to talk with someone. You can email us, write to us. We can send you distant healing. We offer telephone healing and also Skype or Zoom healing. You can also view the Rose Garden with the water fountain and the Sanctuary Chapel um, via the Sanctuary webcams. Join us tomorrow for another Healing Minute with Gary. Love, light and blessings to you all and take care. I'm going to finish today with some music from the same album and it's called Canadian Woods.
Bye for now.